Well, this is one of the best days of the year. We've got some honey that we're gonna run through our extractor. So we're gonna start with the lay-ins frames. And for those of you that follow my channel, I still have some of the traditional Langstroth frames and hives, not too many, but uh, we got quite a bit. A lot of my lay-ins hives did not produce that much honey this year because a lot of them were first year swarms, so I don't really expect to get a whole lot from them. But we did get uh, a really nice crop from just one of the colonies. They, uh, they had six extra frames of honey for us to harvest. So we're gonna start with that. Then we're gonna go ahead and harvest the ones that we got out of Langstroth equipment. I counted about 31 frames, give or take, um, maybe 32. Um, that sometimes will translate to about a quart of honey per frame. That's not always the case when you have wild comb, like what we use in, uh, in the Layens hives because, well, in fact, I, I let the bees build their own comb. I'll show you. This is, um, this is comb that's completely built by the bees. There's no, there's no um, foundation or anything. They just kind of build it themselves. So you can see how kind of wild it looks. There's still a couple bees walking around in there. We'll brush them off. We'll break the caps and then we're gonna go ahead and extract. So let's get started. Um, one little tip for you real quick. If you go and harvest honey or pull the honey out of the beehives, make sure that you extract it within just one or two days. Um, if you're like where we are, we have a lot of problems with hive beetles. I did see quite a few hive beetles running around on the, uh, the wax and the frames. And if you, if you don't harvest your honey right away, those hive beetles will poop all over everything and they'll ruin your honey. So it's very important that you get your honey in and I'm inside my garage, it's all closed off away from uh, where the bees can get the scent of the honey because the minute they get the scent of the honey, half the bee yard will be in here with me. I don't want that. So it's a lot easier to work with just a few bees in the area or no bees at all. I do have some bees that are flying around because I wanted to move this honey quickly out of the bee yard away from all the forage bees that can pick up the scent and then start robbing. So I quickly got it in here. I still have some bees I'm gonna brush off before we begin, but let's go ahead. One of my uh, favorite tools is this here. This is a roller and it breaks the caps off of the, uh, the wax, so the wax capping. So I don't use a capping knife um, like you see a lot of, a lot of people do. I, I find that this works pretty good. It just punctures the cap and I'm gonna show you that right now. Punctures the cap and then we can extract. Seems like you always need a hive tool, no matter what. They are just so handy. And even though I'm not actually opening a hive of bees, it helps me pull the frames out. So again, um, if you can see here, I've got partially drawn. This is wild comb. This is my one of my lay-ins frames. I use the bamboo skewer as just kind of like a midpoint brace and the bees uh, will come down to that and then continue to draw down. This is just as far as they made it this year. So what I want to do is I want to just break these caps right up here and on this side. There's really not that much on here, maybe about a, uh, a pint, half pint jar. And I'm just going to break these caps just by rolling on it. And as long as you're really not roughhousing with these uh, wild combs, because these are all natural wild combs, um, they had a little starter strip, but there's really nothing else uh, keeping this together. There's no fishing line, there's no wire, nothing like that. Um, it's just, it's just uh, the, the wild comb. So you can actually handle it quite easily. Um, but you still want to keep in mind that it is uh, fairly fragile. But in a minute, you're going to see how well it does hold up in the extractor. Usually the comb doesn't blow out, so that side's all broken. I broke all the caps on that side. And I'm just going to hold it right over my extractor while I do the other ones. I'm just going to spin the, uh, 
thing inside so that I can rest it on there. And then that's all I do is I just, I just kind of work it like this. And you'll know the caps are broken because the honey will start dripping out. So. And you just take your time. And this is wobbling just a little bit. Now, for those of you who are wondering, yes, it is easier if you have a helper. So if you have a helper, somebody could study this frame for you or hold the camera for you, whatever. Um, it's always better with a bee buddy. Today was just a little last minute or spontaneous and uh, I just came out and did it. But that's the way it goes. It's all right. I enjoy being out with the bees. So I think this one's just about ready to go into the extractor. So we just rest it in there. And this extractor is made for the Layens and Langstroth frames. So it's really nice because of that. In fact, it's the only one I know of on the market that works on both. It takes three frames at a time. Now this one here, you can see the bees draw down to the uh, bamboo, but they're off to the side a little bit. You can see how they they went right over on that side and they kind of just bulged out. Um, that could be my fault. It might not uh, be perfectly level. That does sometimes happen. Other times it is perfectly level. I'm talking about the, the beehive itself. Sometimes it is perfectly level and the bees just kind of make it funky like that anyway. If you don't like it, you can just crush and strain this. It doesn't really bother me. I think it's going to be just fine. So I'm just going with it. I've uh, become less uh, fussy about the way the bees draw their comb. As long as I can get in and out of the hive, I let them draw. Uh, they make burr comb all over the place. If it's not in my way where I can't pull a frame, I let them keep it because it does make it easier for the bees to get around inside your colony. Um, they make these little bridges between frames, sometimes between the frame and the sidewall. That's kind of hard to pull a frame out when they do that, so I do scrape those off. But a lot of this funky comb, you can actually just let them keep working with it. So that's, that's all I'm doing is just breaking all these caps. Looks like it's going pretty good. And it looks like all that side is just about done. Okay, flip it over. And it's dripping, and that's why I like to do it right over the extractor, so that way it just drips right inside the extractor for me. So again, I just work this side. And you hear that noise it makes? That, that means you've broken the caps and the honey is kind of squishing out with your puncture tool. And I'll, uh, I'll move the camera so you can get a better shot of this in a second. So I just go all the way across and down. And what's really nice about using this tool, um, it, it punctures the caps, and that way you can spin the frame in the extractor. And then you're, you're gonna look at it and say, oh, this thing looks like it's trashed, but it's not. It's only the cappings, and the bees will repair the cells if they need to, and they will. That goes right in there. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera so you can see better. And now you can maybe see a little bit more. I'll try to do it so you can watch me a little better. 
So it's, a, it's uneven, but that's all right. This tool does pretty good. You just run it like this and just keep working it. I kind of like this over the, uh, there, there's cap scratchers. Some people use those uh, and, and those are fine too, but I find this to be faster. I think this is a little bit faster in my opinion than just uh, having to scratch all those caps off little by little. I guess maybe I, I don't have the patience for it, but again, that's just another way of doing it. It's not that any, any way is really better, it just depends what you prefer. You might get used to using something like this and that, that'll be your preferred way of doing it. But it's always good just to know what your options are. There are other ways to do this. So because this comb's uneven, I've kind of got to tilt this roller just a little bit to get these other caps in this uneven area broken open. And you can see they're breaking open. You hear that noise? That's them breaking open. Get all the way up in that corner. And whatever we don't get, we're just gonna put out in the bee yard and let the bees clean it off. All right, that's one side. After we get this side, we'll be ready to spin it. Okay, now I'm right-handed, so let me, uh, I'll have to switch it though for the camera. So here we go again. And just rolling it over those caps, breaking those caps up. Breaking them up here. There we are. And I think we're just about ready to put this one in and give it a spin and see what we get. A couple up here that I didn't get. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. All right, I'll give this a turn and hop it right in there. And let's start cranking. This is a nice way to do this with a hand crank because, again, we're using natural comb. I want to save it for next year, so I don't want the comb to blow out. So I can control that speed right here, and you, you can kind of feel it. You can gauge it, and I found that it's, it's helpful to not try to get all the honey out on the first spin. So you put it in, you sling it out, and then we're going to turn the frames around. And after we start getting most of the honey out, uh, you'll be able to put more torque on this and really speed it up. But in the beginning, when it's still full of honey and it's heavy, you don't want to go too crazy. So we're going to turn this one around. Again, we're going to turn them all around because we got some of the honey out of the one side. So now we just want to turn these and get the honey out on the other side. Okay, so three frames, and now we just go ahead and start to sling out the other way. Now, one of my frames is kind of light compared to the other two. Now, that can make it a little bit lopsided, so you'll feel it. It'll eat, the, the, the extractor will start to jump a little. Right now, it's not doing that, but I can feel it if I put just a little bit more speed on it. It could. Okay, now I'm going to turn them back to the starting position. And now I'm going to go with more force. A lot of the honey has exited the combs. It looks to me like I might have to 
break these caps just a little more though too. So I might uh, run these over just a little bit again. Okay, let's see. Just a little bit. And now I can force more of the honey out, slinging it a little bit harder. And then when you get right down to the very end, you can really go crazy. All right, so there's one. Broke the caps a little bit more. This one, this one emptied out pretty good. There's just a few more I'm gonna make sure we got. Okay. And you go, and how's this one? This one, this one might break. This one looks pretty fragile. I gotta be careful with this one. You know how I said they don't break? Well, hopefully I'll be right. But this one is very thin wax. Let's just uh, try to keep it intact. If we could save it for next year, that'd be great. Okay, let's spin some more. Now we can go a little faster. Better. And now we're starting to get honey at the bottom. Now I'll sling it this way now. Now I'm gonna turn them back again and put a lot more force on them the second time around. So like I say, this is a once a year event. Sometimes I, I do an extraction in the spring, but usually it's just this one time. All right, these are gonna get broken just a little more. You don't really lose honey because what we don't extract today, let's say, you know, we, we've got a, let's just say that we uh, have about, I don't know, a quart or so left in all those cells. And then we just put it out for the bees to clean up. They'll just go get it, and put it back inside the hive. So we're not really going to lose anything by not getting every drop of honey out of the comb, but we'll get as much as we can. Okay, now I'll give those a, a harder spin this time. You'll notice the frames feel a lot lighter. And that's the way it should be. Once you get all the honey out of them, it's just like uh, picking up a, a freshly drawn frame of wax very light. So I'll just put those back in our little nuke box. That's about what we're going to get from that, those frames right there. That's what we saw. It's not a huge amount really, but it's still delicious and it's extra. The bees don't need it. So we took it. 